20 minutes. 20 minutes, okay. Uh, okay, welcome everybody out there and everybody in here. Thanks very much for coming. This is my first video. This is going to be actually clearly um, locked down because I'm, I'm wearing a mask for the first time on the video. So I'll be able to place this, the date of this one. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so um, we have Karachi who's really beautiful sitting here with her kimono <laughs> and these gorgeous flowers. You always do such lovely things with the flowers and everything, you know, and mm -hmm. so, so demurely, so demurely sitting. I feel like you'll easily be able to extract, you know, there's something that's very, um, pleasing about painting somebody who's settled in themselves and uh, so kind of easily elegant so I think you'll find it um, a real gift today okay so I'm going to make a start by looking at <coughs> my sheet of paper and visualizing the space that Comanche could occupy on the piece of paper just checking can everybody hear me when I'm turned around yeah mm -hmm. okay all right so and I spoke yesterday about the importance of limbering up a little bit before you begin. <laughs> you can shake your wrists or do whatever it is that works for you, but really just shaking it off is really helpful to release that stuckness that may, may, may arrive. The other thing that's helpful to do it is just to start. That releases the stuckness. When you start using color and water to transport the pigment around the page, you're naturally going to feel loose and lively. There we have it, no pressure. Now, I put some scrap paper up and there's a sheet of scrap paper on each person's table and there's more there, so don't be afraid to use the paper. Um, the reason it's on the vertical is so that you can see how the color behaves on a vertical um, regarding the consistency of the paint, you know, and the, um, the color as well, of course. Like, there'll be some times when I don't want it to be too runny and I can test it here. All right. And then I would recommend you steady yourself at your easel in the same position each time when you go to look at Kamachi um, and, and paint down. And then you can maybe take a couple of steps back, but when you come forward again, assume the same position and you'll, you'll know it. When you come back up, you'll know. But just, just do a little check to be sure that you're not kind of in different, different angles each time. It's important that, that you see her from the same point of view every time. Okay, and as you, um, as you uh, limber up and get ready, you might find that the out breath is, is helpful as a steadying down thing. And it's also helpful to glance occasionally at the model. And even as you're putting your paints out, you might be kind of seeing, you know, getting yourself familiar with the whole setup. It's not a sudden, urgent start, you know ease yourself in you can put your putting your paint out is, is a simple way and even low to the ground if you're if you're comfortable doing that it's quite nice to get low to the ground when you're preparing as well all right and i like to have i like to have my water on the right hand side because i'm right-handed and to hold the palette here actually so that i can see the color i'm aiming for as i'm making it and even holding the palette up there allows me to see what colour might be the most um, effective to begin with. Um, but I usually do end up starting with the sap green, which is that, mixed with the cadmium red, which is that colour. Those two mixed together give me a fairly good tone to represent the shadows in the skin. Now that's a little bit more subtle than I'm wanting, so I'm putting more green in and, and a touch more red. And if you feel like it's a bit, a bit too green, a little bit more red. If it's too red, a little bit more green. Obviously, you know, fine-tune things. And then you can test it again. And then I'm going to wash my brush. I'm tapping it on the paper towel, so it's, it's handy too to have some paper, paper towel beside you so you can see the colour and you can kind of let the paint and the water run off the brush if it's all wet. If it's too wet, regularly let it um, run off. And then you can kind of come with it you know you don't want to be bringing a full brush of water in each time you mix the color you want it to kind of stay like that really on your palette when it's held vertically that means you can make a succinct mark which is fluidity your brush is still together but it's not like pooling at the bottom there and it's not running and dripping away from you unless you want it to in which case you put more water in. <laughs> And it's all like <laughs> all of these marks are valid, but I suppose when you begin, you might want a consistency like that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and I'm just.
just going to make a start. I've, I've kind of got an idea that the skin, so there's a kind of a vertical drop from where the hair meets the face here, and then where the V of the top meets the, the skin here, you know, where the top meets the skin. It's almost like a, a definite di diag diagonal line. It's a straightish line. Yesterday I spoke about aiming for the general sweeping statements rather than any convoluted little things so that you capture the full feeling of the kind of energy of the pose if you like and then you can come in and do the um, smaller little bits um, afterwards okay <clears throat> so so with that in mind I kind of see that as being there that's my starting point if you like and so it makes me want to do something to the jawline maybe He likes what he sees. Yes. <laughs> and I'm going to put a touch of um, cadmium orange. I don't know if that was on your list. I've got some anyway if it wasn't. The cadmium orange lightens it up a little and maybe, maybe makes the colour that's on the neck there. So I'm wanting to bring it up so that it kind of follows. There's a kind of a cast shadow. It's, the shadow is not like there isn't any very distinct source of light today. But I think because we've got such lovely, it's, it's no harm, you know, we've got so many lovely embellishments around that actually the skin being subtle is fine. And this would be the line of the neck then. It's a lovely thing, you know, once you get going and begin looking, there's, there's almost no better place to be. You know, you're seizing the day, you're actually in the moment, being attentive, responding being attentive, responding, and it's lovely, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and you can build in pauses so that the thing that maybe all of us have heard about look twice, draw once, take your time working up to the mark, and watch that there's no beach nuts under your feet. They're doing dog poo there. No, it's a, <laughs> it's a, you know, beach, uh, beach nut shell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So here we go. Just finding the general direction there, and you know you you don't have to get it exactly right early on. I would just go tent, you know, go um, a little pace yourself. Like there's no bad rush here, so you can pace yourself. And knowing that you can adjust these marks, they're fairly light. You can adjust them. Uh, later on if you're not happy with the position of things. I'm going to pull up the, the skin here now again um, to describe the side of the face there and where the, where the temple is. So I often find that placing the brush and pulling it allows the paint to paint it a second time on the way back down. So it, mm -hmm. it kind of gives it a freshness of all. And I would encourage you to experiment with the way that you apply the brush. If you feel like driving a car for the first time if you're not familiar with these brushes but um, it's worth you know doing things like printing the edge there you know that's one way you can use them pulling it up and lifting and um, holding it this way lets the paint run more freely from the brush okay and then this is another thing to, to push it up and lift in such a way that it's not very clearly stated Just, yeah you, you get you get your own kind of ways of, of using it too. Let's see. And when that kind of disturbs the jaw, there's an idea that later on it can re-establish the jaw once it's dry again. So it's, it's, it's no harm to let things happen that are out of control a little bit as well. Okay, let's just get moving in. So printing that there. You can see where the V is in relation to the rest of the face the point of the V is, how much of the face is sliced off by that. Okay. Yeah. And it's quite good to look at the volume of the skin on the face in relation say, to the volume of skin on the neck. 
so that neither one is significantly um, out of proportion. And with my eyes half closed, I reckon that this here would be an important case. There's a, a, the dark of the cheek underneath the cheekbone in relation to the light outside, actually. There's another here place for me to go there. Those of you who have been to the watercolour workshops before might have reminders for me as to what you found helpful for people who are doing this for the first time. So if you can think of something that I've forgotten to say, let me know. You know, I just shout it out. Veronica, have you got something there that you can... No. No, I've forgotten everything. It's been so long since I've done it. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brilliant. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good or a to see all this again. <laughs> might be a good place to go next um, yeah so I'm judging how far between the hairline and the chin so where where between the hairline and the chin would the eyebrows be placed and forgetting even that they are eyebrows and just seeing the direction that they run in in relation to the hairline and the parallel really and about the width of this brush so I've moved on to the slightly smaller brush because this allows me to explain things with one mark again um, <laughs> I mean, you don't have to be too worried about picking the particular brush and everything. Just use um, whatever I'm saying here that's helpful and you don't have to take all the information in. So there's that eyebrow. I might put a touch of ultramarine blue. So ultramarine blue looks like, um, looks like that. It looks like that. And I'm putting that into the color that I had used. I put a bit, there was more cadmium red in it there and there um, and then a bit of the ultramarine blue will make it read more as maybe eyebrow colour. Um, so I've got that eyebrow which comes across the face almost halfway across so I think I could do with bringing it over a little bit further. Um, there we are, just a little bit further. And then the other one is lower than that one and reads to me as being almost horizontal actually. And of course the eyebrow too is going to help to identify the shape of the forehead. Um, yeah. Now rather than going, because there's no skin colour anywhere else in the middle of the face, I don't want to pressurise myself by making me paint the nose straight away in the middle of whiteness. So I'm going to put um, a clean out the palette, a clean out the palette and put in, uh, what was the two colours I used again, the cadmium red and the sap green in order to make, oh my god, I'm putting lots of colour in. okay though it's actually so some people will maybe are on the side of loads of color and other people mm -hmm. are on the side of not enough and we all need to kind of find a balance there you know so just if you do have tons of color out don't feel like you have to use it you know you can wipe it away and and maybe start again until you get a color you're happy with actually do you know what i want to do now first like yesterday when I said I wanted to do something I would do something else so I'm just going to put it to you you We've also been there said before, if yeah. you see something that needs to be done do it then while you're actually look. that's true honour the moment of yeah. noticing yeah. yeah so if you see something that needs to that you feel into thanks Veronica see well, but you did say that you see and that's what you're doing when you teach it's topaz oh, oh yeah that's how I used to do it so I'm glad you found that if I remember something, I put it down. Yeah. Well, yeah. Because yeah. you know it's kind of coming to you yeah. for a reason, right? Uh -huh. I just didn't think yeah. about it later. Uh-huh. That's intuitive. And I think you feel it in your gut when you know something needs to be done. Mm -hmm. So trust that and encourage it by letting your, gut, letting your guts hang loose. You know, <laughs> let, let it, let, or I don't know, breathe into your belly. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> If you breathe into your belly and then um, anything that comes up that needs to be identified. Belly is your second brain, I've heard. Mm -hmm. And That's maybe right. second heart as well, what do you think? I don't know. Okay, so I put, yeah, so what I was saying was that actually um, it seems like the next thing that might be helpful here is to paint the hair over the ear. And the hair over the ear is lower than the, than the eyebrow was there. Finding 
moves that feel that feel like they're going to explain the hair and at the same time looking at the height of the hair in relation to say the height of the skin on the forehead and just put a touch more ultramarine blue into that brown color now in order to make it a bit darker again and i'll push and lift to find the edge of the hair there push and lift and i notice that the edge where the hair meets the space around it is slanting in that direction Okay. And I'm kind of seeing how as well that it corresponds to the space of skin between the eyebrows. The turn in the hair happens above the second eyebrow, so it starts to go down the way above the second eyebrow there. <coughs> now, it might sound as though there's a, a real kind of technical approach and a step by step that you have to be geometrically studying every shift. You will find your own pathway through your painting. You don't have to follow what I'm saying. But I wouldn't, well, you do need to follow what I'm saying, <laughs> a bit, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> but, um, but it's a different path for every person. And so the main thing really is that you're curious and you keep open to, to, to your own perception. Keep open to what you're saying and what's calling to you um, to be responded to. So, um, so for you, it might be somewhere else that you're drawn to, to go next. Um, however, I would encourage everybody by the coffee break, to have found something inspiring to explain the space of skin, <coughs> to explain the space of the hair, and something to describe the body. And a surface that you feel inspired to work over. So that kind of means that you're not manipulating the surface too much, but um, keeping an open freedom there. And that means it's kind of all to play for. And it'll go like that. <laughs> 